racing caravan rolls on. It's a road trip weekend for many. Yeah, life on the road, a good life. And a good Saturday morning to you. Welcome to Coca Pond Speedway's Lap Time Live. Brought to you by Coca Pond Casino and by One Hour Air Conditioning and Heating. Racing Radio here on Outlaw Country, AM 1400. I'm your host, Mike Sanhope, and thanks for joining us today. Hey, we're going to be visiting with Coca Pond Speedway Pro Stock driver Brett Samala. Samala coming out of the season's first half on top on the points, and he'll be looking to keep his number one pro stock in that number one position when the season resumes in September. First, though, more out-of-town race action as several Kokopah Speedway Series regulars continued their summer travels, and more are going to be doing so today. Imperial's Dwayne Rogers and the DR89 IMCA Modified were in action last Saturday night at Prescott Valley Raceway. Rogers pulling off a 10th place finish in the feature and a third in his heat. Also joining that action at PVR, you must tie Rogers and the 8T Northern Sport Mod. Rogers stopping off at Prescott on the return to Yuma from a multi-race trip through Colorado, Nebraska, and Kansas. Officials allowed Rogers to run his Sport Mod with the A-Mods at PVR and to finish up his trip with a 14th at Prescott. Hey, we mentioned road trip at the top of the show. Well, it is here today for as many as eight Yuma, Imperial, and Ramona based competitors. Uh, James Dupree, his number 84 IMCA Northern Sport Mod. Joey Essery, his number 90 Street Stock. Rick Hibbert and the number 4 Factory Stock. Lance Maury and his 19 SB IMCA Modified. Timmy Reese and his number 38 Northern Sport Mod. And John Malloy and his IMCA Modified. All looking to make the run up Interstate 8 to Casa Grande for action tonight at Central Arizona Raceway. Now, Dupree, Essery, and Hibbard were all at CAR two weeks ago when rains washed out the evening's features. Those mains are going to be made up this afternoon prior to the regular program to follow. Now, based on their heat finishes two weeks ago and presuming they do make it over for action this afternoon, Dupree would start fifth in the feature out of 17 X mods, while Essery and Hibbard both in the stocks. Essery would start in the number three position and Hibbard in the 15 spot. Mari and Reese, meanwhile, along with Malloy, all will be competing in the regular race program only. Also word that Brawley's Russell Allen and his 23R IMCA Modified are on the road today over to Casa Grande as well, while Ramona's Cole Dick, who's number 77D IMCA Modified, has become a familiar sight at Cocopa Speedway, will look to continue his winning ways later today at Verona outside of San Diego. Hey, we've uh, talked a lot over the past several weeks about the number of new cars under construction for the season's second half at Cocopa Speedway, and we can add another one to the list. Captain Henry B., driver of the number 87 street stock, with some help from the White family and from Team 86, putting the finishing touches on his new IMCA stock ride. The captain hoping to make a couple of shakedown cruises, so to speak, possibly next Saturday, and then again on the 24th over at Casa Grande. Chula Vista's Manny Baldivia is another Cocopa Series regular. We're also talking about making that trip on August 24th. And speaking of trips, Cocopa Speedway Director of Operations Greg Burgess up in the Great Northwest last weekend, a homecoming of sorts, taking in some action at Grays Harbor Raceway. Hope you enjoyed the trip, Greg, and good to have you back home here in Yuma. Hey, one other item we'd like to pass along, All-Star voting for the IMCA Fast Shafts All-Star Invitational coming to a close this coming Tuesday at 10 a.m. local time. Three drivers each each from the five IMCA Extreme Motorsports Modified regions are already into that program. Another 13 drivers are being selected via voting on the IMCA Racing Facebook page to round out that field. A number of the drivers already in, well, familiar names from the IMCA Winter Nationals earlier this year at Cocopa Speedway, along with some of the others who were still on the outside looking in. That Fast Shafts All-Star Invitational, by the way, is set for Friday, September 6th at Boone Speedway. To cast a vote or to find out more, just visit imca.com or IMCA Racing on Facebook. And of course, as the summer break continues at Cocopa Speedway, we'll continue to pass along news and information on drivers from all five divisions that call Cocopa Speedway home. Up next here on Lap Time Live, we get set to visit with Cocopa Speedway Pro Stock driver Brett Samala. Some season review and a look ahead to racing again in September at Cocopa 
Cocopah Speedway. It's Racing Radio here on Outlaw Country. Cocopah Speedway's lap time live, presented by Cocopah Casino and by One Hour Air Conditioning and Heating. And we'll be back with more in just a moment. This is Jan. Hi, Jan. My name's Roger Rogerson, and I'm running for state senate. I need an eco-friendly car that'll help deliver my eco-friendly message to people across this great state of ours. Well, Prius has led the way in hybrid technology for over 12 years, saving our country over a billion gallons of gas within the past decade. Wow, those are some great talking points. That's what I'm here for. Jan, you'd make a great press secretary. You should join me out there on the stump. Thanks. But I like it right here, in my seat. Get the hybrid that started it all. Right now at your local Toyota dealer. Hurry in today and get amazing deals and low APRs on a Prius that's right for you. To learn more, visit Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Based on average EPA estimated combined MPG rating of Prius versus all MY01 through MY11 cars and 10,000 miles per year. FuelEconomy.gov actual mileage will vary. Visit Alexander Toyota in Yuma, or for more information, please log on to Toyota.com. Toyota. No matter what type of air conditioning or heating help you need, schedule some help from One Hour Air Conditioning. Ready for the season? One Hour Air Conditioning and Heating can help. No AC at all? One Hour can help. Need help upgrading your old inefficient system? One Hour can help. Now's the time to schedule your annual air conditioning safety inspection for just $59. Call One Hour today at 783-4242. Some limitations and exclusions apply. We're always on time. What do you have there? It's one of those new scratchers from the Arizona Lottery. Cash Bonanza. Why are you saying it like that? Like what? Cash Bonanza. Yeah, where is that sound coming from? You are creeping me out right now. That's just Cash Bonanza. It's the new $10 ticket that can win you up to $1 million instantly. So, Cash Bonanza. Right, the new Cash Bonanza from the Arizona Lottery. You can't, can't win, win if, if you, you don't play. play. Hi, this is Joe Montaigne. Every time my Uncle Willie tells me about his service in Patton's Third Army in World War II, I'm reminded of what we owe the U.S. Army. Fourteen generations of American soldiers who have courageously defended our nation. Their stories represent the best of America and should never be forgotten. Join me to help build the National Museum of the United States Army, a long overdue tribute to all American soldiers. To learn more, visit armyhistory.org. You can help the Army Historical Foundation honor the soldiers of yesterday and today. Go to armyhistory.org to learn how you can help build the National Museum of the U.S. Army. The museum will be the Army's national landmark, preserving the sacrifice of every man and woman who has worn the Army uniform since 1775. Visit armyhistory.org today and honor the Army's service of every generation. This message is brought to you by Z93 and Outlaw Country. Welcome to Food City. We have some tremendous extra savings just for you this week. Like Squirt, RC, Sunkist, or 7-Up Soda in the big 2-liter bottles, just 88 cents each. Lace potato chips or Doritos tortilla chips, just $1.99 when 3 are purchased in a single transaction. Bar S Jumbo Meat Franks or Bologna, 16-ounce packages, only 89 cents. And Pepsi, big 2-liter bottles, 4 bottles for only $4. Thank you for shopping and saving this week at Food City, the store, with low prices when you need them. And welcome back to Cocopa Speedway's Lap Time Live, brought to you by Cocopa Casino and by One Hour Air Conditioning and Heating. And in studio with us now, the man sitting number one on the points in the Cocopa Speedway Pro Stocks, Brett Sabala, driver of the number one Pro Stock. And welcome to the show, Brett. Good morning, Mike. Thanks for having me. Hey, thank you so much for taking time out of your day today to uh, come visit with us. And uh, just to start things off this morning, Brett, uh, midway through the season break at Cocopa Speedway, what have you been doing on summer break? Uh, we ran in Tucson a few weeks ago. Um, Racing-wise, that's about all we've done. Uh, you know, doing a lot of work on the car, stuff we didn't really have time to do during the season. And um, trying to get a little bit of a break. But um, we might do a little bit more racing here before we start up at Cocopa again. I was thinking about uh, possibly a trip back over to Tucson again? Yeah, um, they're on their summer break right now. Uh, we might possibly hit them one more time before they start up. Um, you know, Casa Grande would be nice, but uh, there's a big variance in the rules between ours and theirs. And I uh, just need to see if uh, those guys would work with us and let us run up there or not. 
We will see how that works out. And if you do happen to uh, make the run on over, you know you'll take our wish of good luck with you. Thank you. Brett, you've been involved in racing in one form or another for, well, well over 20 years. Uh, your dad, Stan, of course, a uh, driver of note at, uh, at what was then Yuma Speedway. And uh, it just kind of a natural thing that uh, you were going to get involved in it and, and then stay with it for all these years? Yeah, I mean, my dad didn't push me into it or anything. I just grew up, you know, at the shop all the time, and um, I just loved being around the race car and working on it. And, I mean, I've, you know, remember being around race cars since I can walk. And it just, yeah, it was definitely natural to me. I mean, I'd, it just seemed to make sense. Over the years, you worked your way through a, a variety of different uh, forms of racing. Of course, we take note of a 1997 Pro Stock Championship at, again, what was then uh, Yuma Speedway. But you spent some time in the sprint cars and also, uh, well, kind of the deep end of the pool early on back in uh, 2001 uh, in the Mid-American Racing Series running late models out of the Larry Shaw shop. What was that experience like? Oh, that, that was awesome. That was an experience of a lifetime um, you know, we ran back there um, off and on for about, I think, four or five months. We, you know, we kept the car and the hauler and everything back there. And we would go, you know, we kind of pick and chose our, our weekends when we were going to go back, when we could hit the most races and, you know, the closest races to uh, Batesville. Um, that's where, you know, we were based out of back there. And it, it was pretty tough. You know, we would, um, you know, work all day Thursday, catch a red eye out of Phoenix Thursday night. It would fly into Little Rock about 6 in the morning, uh, Friday morning, get a rental car, drive uh, about an hour and a half north to Batesville, um, basically just running on whatever sleep we could get on the flight there, um, and then, you know, start working on the car, and, you know, depending on where we raced that Friday night, you know, we had to get going by mid, you know, mid to late afternoon. Um, we had, we had a lot of help back there, you know, being, um, you know, right at the, the sh you know, the Shaw's shop. But there was a lot of stuff that we had to do also. Do you still have uh, contact uh, with, with the Shaw Shaw? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, being that, you know, we don't run a modified or a late model right now, you know, we don't, don't need them as much. But, you know, a lot of the same guys still work there, uh, you know, the guys in the parts department. And, uh, you know, Kevin and Larry still still work there. And um, um, Kevin's, uh, no, excuse me, um, Larry's son, uh, Kirk, he, he runs a graphics division, uh, you know, New Vision Graphics, um, and we still use them. So, yeah, we still keep in contact with those guys. How did that uh, experience of doing that uh, influence you insofar as, you know, the approach you've taken over the years, uh, you know, bringing us up to date, so to speak, now at Kokopah Speedway? Yeah, they, uh, I mean, being back there, it, it definitely showed us a different side of racing. I mean, a lot of those guys that we raced against, they do it for a living. And obviously, being there at the Shaw shop, I mean, they do that for a living, you know. So it it showed us a, a professional side of racing that you don't get to see out here all the time. And, you know, not that, you know, we don't take it professionally out here, but not, I don't know of any of us doing it for a living. So that's that was definitely a whole other ball game there. And, and that's part of the, the time commitment deal as well, uh, which we constantly uh, talk about uh, if you're doing it for a living, kind of one thing, the amount of hours that go in, but when you're balancing a, a whole outside career, you've got your own shop, you're running here in town, and some other business ventures going. How do you how do you keep that all together? I, I don't know. I think <laughs> about that now, and you know, I, I was younger then, and I mean, not that I'm old now, but um, I think about that sometimes, and I, I, I think I could do it again just because the excitement part of it keeps you going, but I honestly don't know how we did it and did it for so long and then come back and go to work all the time. It's It, it was tough. Well, coming back to the uh, present a little bit, you racked up seven wins in 2012, fell short of the championship, though. Has that been a, uh, a driver, a motivator for your performance this year? Uh, yes and no. I mean, you know, we we pretty much take every race, you know, race to race. You know, You know, even though we are leading the points, you know, we've never really been into so-called points racing. I mean, we show up every race to do the best we can, and, and, you know, we try to win every race. And, you know, we did the same last season. We had, um, you know, some mechanical problems in the beginning of the year that we missed a couple races from, and then we had some, you know, pretty bad mechanical problems, you know, during the year that, you know, cost us some points. So, I mean, 
we pretty much, like I said, go out every race and just do the best we can and, and try and win every race. And the points are going to happen how they're going to happen. Talked a little bit about the challenges uh, that you overcame there. Uh, and, and that's kind of a repeating theme in 2013 for you. Uh, five feature wins so far this year, but a couple of big mechanical issues along with some on-track contact. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Last year was, you know, um, was when we had a lot of the really bad uh, problems. We had a couple of suspension um, failures, and it was actually, it ended up being a, a new shock package that we were trying. Um, our left rear shock um, was just, it shouldn't have been on the car. Um, and that was causing us um, some problems where we were getting into the wall there two or three races in a row. Finally got that figured out, and then, uh, in the turkey race, you know, we had the real bad accident in qualifying on the Saturday night. Um, and that was just, you know, we, we go over that car bumper to bumper before every race. That's one of the last things that we do. And, you know, it was uh, basically a set screw on the steering coupler um, came loose. And, you know, we check everything on that car. And that was one thing that we didn't check. And, I mean, it's it's under the dash. And, you know, I, I've never seen anybody even have that problem before, so it was just something that we overlooked, and, you know, we've come up with a solution now where, you know, it's impossible for that to happen again, but it's one of those things with racing. I mean, you know, you never know what could happen. And you never stop learning. Yeah, exactly. Well, on the on the plus side of the ledger, uh, you got to visit with Tony Stewart a bit when uh, he was here earlier this year with the uh, Lucas Oil American Sprint Car Series. What, what was it like talking with Tony? Yeah, you know... Um, I was honestly not really a big Tony Stewart fan before, um, and over the last couple of years, I've become more of a Tony Stewart fan just because of his love for racing and how he still goes back to his roots of dirt track racing. And um, you know, we were we took the car out to Hot Lap um, that night, and we happened to pull in, and you know, one of the only open spots was right next to his hauler, and we parked there, and um, you know, his crew guys were you know pretty nice talked to us a little bit and then you know at the end of the night you know i went over and talked to tony and he actually you know um took me inside the back of his hauler and i talked to him for a few minutes and he was really nice i mean you know after his crazy weekend of going back and forth to pir and in, in coco pa uh, and to on top of that he had the flu the whole weekend um you know, I, I thought he handled himself pretty well it had to have been a cool experience, oh, yeah. being able to break bread like that. So oh, yeah, definitely. Hey, we're visiting with Brett Samala, driver of the number one pro stock and leader of the points in the Coca Pa Speedway Racing Series for the pro stocks in 2013. We're going to be back to talk more with Brett here on Coca Pa Speedway's Lap Time Live, brought to you by Coca Pa Casino and by One Hour Air Conditioning and Heating. August 4th through September 28th, break the bank at Coca Pa Casino, and you can walk away with 20 $1,000 in cash. Earn entries by playing your favorite slots, bingo, and table games. Every 20 points gets one entry. Weekly drawings every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night. And winners are entered into the grand prize drawing on September 28th for 20 grand in cash. Want to increase your chances of winning the grand prize? Come in every Tuesday through Saturday and earn three grand prize entries during our hot seat drawing. $20,000 in cash. It's your chance to break the bank. Coca Pa Casino. Live the rush. The Yuma Police Department averages 40 vehicle versus pedestrian accidents a year. That's 40 too many. We ask the driver to drive aware, the pedestrian to ride with care. Because the moment you're not aware of your surroundings could be your last moment. Drive aware, ride with care. Are you ready to spruce up that boat or watercraft? SignPro can provide boat letters and custom graphics. Click your best on the lake or river and make a splash. Visit SignPro for your free estimate.
Ready to achieve your college degree and advance your career? Attend Grand Canyon University. Founded in 1949, GCU is Arizona's premier private Christian university. Our expanding campus in the heart of Phoenix helps students find their purpose by applying Christian values to their education. GCU's diverse and challenging programs develop students into critical thinkers, effective communicators, and responsible leaders. We also offer a rich campus experience. Our 100-acre Phoenix campus includes a brand new recreation center a 5,000-seat arena, a resort-style swimming pool, and three new residence halls. For working professionals, GCU offers flexible evening and online courses that work with your schedule while allowing close communication with instructors. A quality education is just the beginning of our value. In fact, GCU is now as affordable as many state universities. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Pursue your degree on campus, online, or in the evening. Schedule a campus tour today. Visit gcu.edu. What exactly is a public nuisance? Well, that may differ a little from person to person. Some people might say it's a front yard full of weeds three feet high. Some people might see three feet weeds and think, what a beautiful expression of Mother Nature. Some people might say it's a 74 burnt orange murky bobcat on blocks in a driveway with visible rust and a back fender that's only this much off the ground. Some might see that bobcat and think, what an interesting weekend hobby that person has. All right, so there's differences of opinion. But when you absolutely, positively can't stand the sight of something one minute longer, such as excessive storage of junk or a housing code violation, or you're concerned there's a condition that could spread over to your property, then it might be time for a call to the Public Nuisance Hotline, also known as the Anti-Ugly Ordinance Hotline. That number is 373-4515. 373-4515. Call it, and we'll have one of our code enforcement officers check it out. 373-4515. The City of Yuma Anti-Ugly Ordinance Ordinance Hotline, 373-4515. And welcome back to Cocopa Speedway's Lap Time Live. Race and radio here on Outlaw Country AM 1400. Presented by Cocopa Casino and by One Hour Air Conditioning and Heating. And resuming our visit now with Brett Samala, driver of the number one pro stock. And Brett, uh, already talked about this a little bit, uh, but I want to come at this from just a little bit of a different angle. You are sitting first in the uh, standings here at the uh, season break, but that points chase is still somewhat tight. Goals for the second half to try and open that up, or is it just to get out and try to win every time? Well, it would definitely be nice to have a little bit more of a, a lead in the points. Um, it's, you know, you can't really plan this kind of stuff out, though. You just have to basically take a race at a time. And, you know, I, I usually try and stay out of trouble. Um, sometimes, you know, I, I, I should be a little bit more aggressive, and I, I'll probably do that a little bit more the second half of the season. But, um, you know, I, I just try and, you know, at least the first part of the race, try and, and get, um, you know, some laps under my belt and everyone else's and let everyone calm down. Um, and sometimes that's good. Sometimes it, it's bad because, you know, it, it can keep you out of trouble. But then sometimes you don't finish where you'd like to. So that's probably something that I'll, I'll do a little bit different this uh, next half is, um, you know, probably not lay back as, as much as I do sometimes towards the beginning of the race. Do you see the level of competition in the pro stocks, you know, coming up as the year has progressed? Yeah, it's definitely gotten more competitive. And um, there's... Four or five cars um, that I'm hearing um, that are, should be pretty competitive cars. Some of the guys that have taken some time off and, you know, a couple new guys that are going to be back. So I, I look for the Pro Stock Division to have, you know, a solid 15-car field uh, when we start back up in September. And I, and I would say that probably half of those cars um, or maybe more are going to be very competitive. Be nice to see, and and again, just continuing the progression that we saw during the first half of the season. We were talking off mic just a uh, moment ago about how racing gets into your blood. Once you get bit, uh, it's always with you. And then people who've taken time away from the sport and then come back, and uh, you were you're involved with dipping dots out at the speedway. Uh, uh, nice treat. Uh, if you're out at the speedway, make sure you check them out. But that kind of led you back in a little bit, did it not? Yeah. Um I didn't have the bug too bad. Um, I mean, I thought about it, you know, every once in a while um, when the track was closed here and we weren't racing. Um, but then I remember the very first night I went back out there when it was open. I mean, I I didn't say anything that, you know, that I definitely wanted to get back into it. But right away that first night, I had the bug again. And 
there was no doubt in my mind that I, eventually I'd get back out there. But you've uh, you've gotten a front row view, so to speak, of uh, action that's been pretty incredible all year. I any words that you would pass along to the casual fan who, uh, at this point, maybe hasn't been out to see a race? Uh, I mean, you know, there's everyone complains there's not a whole lot to do in Yuma, and I mean. Uh, the speedway out there is, I mean, it's great entertainment. I mean, especially for the amount of money that you're going to spend. It's live entertainment. And it's nothing that's, that's scripted. I mean, it's it's something new every night. And, I mean, I, I think, you know, once fans start going out there, uh, they get into it and they become regulars. Uh, we uh, Room for everybody. Exactly. We're, we're an all-inclusive group out there, that's yeah. for sure. Well, where would you like to be? A year from now, five years from now, ten years from now. Um, I, I mean, I get asked that a lot and um, think about it a lot. I'm, I got some things that are possibly up in the air for next year. Nothing really for sure. I mean, it's possible could be running the pro stock again next year. Um, possibly maybe a modified. Um, my ultimate goal, I would love to get back into a late model again. Um, I mean, obviously, that would require more traveling. Um, but if things work out, um, that would be my, my first pick, would to get back into the late model. Talked earlier about time commitment uh, and what it takes to be able to go racing. Uh, and I know there are some people, supporters, who, who help to boost you and, and help you to get out on track. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, my, my family... Um, you know, it supports me. Um, that's the hardest thing about racing for me, anyways, is the time away from the family. Uh, you know, between work, working on the car, and racing. Uh, but my family supports me. My, my dad supports me a ton. Um, I mean, he's always there helping on the car. Um, you know, after work. Um, have you know one of my guys on my pit crew, Tom Torrance. He's been um, on my pit crew since I was running the pro stock back in '97. He's always there to help out. Um, and then we have, you know, a couple, you know, sponsors, you know, our, our shop, Yuma Automotive, and then the All-Star Detailing, and then um, we have Klein Engines, um, uh, Fourth Avenue Gym, and then uh, Joe over at uh, Chassis Dynamics, they've hel helped us out a couple times, um, and then uh, Jeffrey Fabrication, they help us out a little bit too, so it takes, it takes everything you can get, you know, all the help you can get helps out. Hey, can the end of the summer come soon enough for you? Uh, I, I want to start racing again, um, you know, on a more of a weekly basis. Um, the heat doesn't really bother me so much um, as the not racing does. <laughs> <laughs> well, not all that long. We're only about seven or eight weekends away, and then we'll be back at it regularly here. And I uh, know we're looking forward to that, and we're certainly looking forward to seeing you back in action, Brett. Thank you. Hey, thank you for joining us today here on Lap Time Live. One more time, Brett Samala, driver of the number one pro stock and your pro stock points leader at Kokopa Speedway when we go back to racing September 28th at the Diamond in the Desert. Hey, there are other happenings ongoing around the complex of facilities that include Cocopa Speedway and Cocopa Casino, and here to tell us some more about them, Anna Corpus. Good morning, Anna. Hi, Mike. As promised last week, I now have information on the 2013-2014 dove hunting season. It begins one half hour before sunrise on September 1st and ends at sunset on September 15th. Now, tickets go on sale August 22nd and are $60.00. As most hunters know, there are two dove seasons, plus quail and pheasant seasons. So to get more information on that, check out Cocopa.com for rules, dates, and additional cost. Tickets can be purchased at the Cocopa gift shop, our administration office, or at Sprague Sports in Yuma. For more information, call 928-627-2102. And if you're looking for some excitement tonight at Wild River, catch the action of UFC 163 Aldo vs. Zombie inside the sports bar and lounge that starts at 7 p.m. All ages can enjoy cosmic bowling every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from 6 until closing. And all this month at Cocopa Real Colorado Golf Course and Grill, golf nine holes with a cart and lunch, all for $15. Remember, draft beer is only $1. You can always check out Rio's Facebook for event updates. Rio is located in Summerton and open from dawn until 1 p.m. And that's it for this weekend. See you next. 
Hey, thank you very much, Anna, and we will see you next week. And a reminder that information on all of those items and more is available at cocapod.com. And, of course, as we look forward to the second half of the 2013 racing season, make sure you stop in as well at www.cocapodspeedway.com, where all of the scoop is available on the second half of the race season, plus a little bit of a look ahead to 2014 as well. And, of course, make sure you like us on Facebook. Hey, we'd also note that uh, if you'd like to check out one of our prior Lap Time Live interviews, that archive is now available through Cocopod.com. Just go to the Multimedia tab, and you'll be able to go back to one of our prior programs if you'd like to hear what a particular driver had to say at a particular time. Well, summer break, it may be on, but the racing news, well, it continues a week after week, and will, of course, be right here to bring it all to you as we look forward and get ever closer to the second half of the 2013 season at the Diamond in the Desert. You've been listening to Lap Time Live, presented by Cocopa Casino and by One Hour Air Conditioning and Heating. We'll be back with more next Saturday morning at 11 a.m. here on Outlaw Country, a.m. 1400.